Hi, this is going to be a introduction to P5 um, and creative coding generally. So I'm going to talk about what P5 is, um, why you should code in P5, why it's interesting, um, briefly cover what JavaScript is, and quickly get you started making something. And there'll be more videos later uh, that will get into the detail of this. But for now, what you're looking at is a really simple uh, experiment in uh, P5.js, which is a creative coding library that enables designers, artists, uh, people like you, to uh, get started with coding and create wonderful things. So just to start, let's look at what P5 is. So this, not that, but this is the P5 website. And there's an introduction here. So it says P5 is a JavaScript library for creative coding. Now already there's a bunch of things there that might look tricky, like P5.js is written in a weird way, and what is JavaScript, and what's a JavaScript library. But creative coding, I think, we can maybe get on board with. Uh, it's uh, making coding easy, basically. Making uh, it good for artists and designers and educators and beginners and anyone else, it says. So let's break that down. So firstly, P5. Well, it's by the Processing Foundation, hence the P. Um, the uh, five, I don't know, uh, I'm sure it says somewhere. The dot .js, um, all JavaScript libraries have this dot .js thing. They tend to anyway. But what's a JavaScript library? Well, JavaScript is a programming language. And uh, let's just imagine it's the best one for you to learn right now. And uh, there's hundreds of them out there. This is a good one. Let's leave it there. You can learn more. You can Google about it. But... Um, Trust me, it's a good one to start with. And uh, a library, well, it's a collection of really useful things that let you do beautiful, fun, creative stuff. It can be quite hard without a library of useful things. Um, and I'll show you why, I hope. So to get started, um, there's lots of useful links here. Um, there's a thing called getting started. Now, actually, it's worth saying that I think this is the more complicated way of doing it. Uh, and that talks about downloading an editor and... Well, actually, no. It, it does say you can jump straight into the editor here, which is what we're going to do. But the stuff down here, download and file setup, don't do any of that. Not now. You can do it later. Um, to start off with, we want to use the new P5 editor. And there's also a link here. Now, this is the editor. Um, and it looks like that, right? So you've got something over here where you can put code in, and then you can hit play, and then you see the thing on the right here. Now, what I'd tell you to do first is to log in to this, because you can play around here, but nothing gets saved. Um, you can't share it. You can see it happen, but if you want to come back tomorrow, you want to save stuff. So before you do anything, log in. Now, if you click log in, you can um, you know, stick in an email address here and a password and do it that way. Uh, you have to sign up down there. I'm going to go in with Google because I've got a Google account. You can also use GitHub. Um, so let's just log in now for a couple of seconds because I don't want you to see my email address um, because there's tons of them up there. Anyway, here we go. I've logged in. Now, you see it's gone dark. Well, there's actually some settings up here and you can change it to dark in this dark mode. Um, now, it looks almost the same, but you'll see it's got this name here. Now, every time you make a new sketch, it choose a random name here, which are really good fun, but you can change them, so you can go in there and change them. I'm not going to go into too much detail on the editor right now, because Daniel Schiffman, uh, aka The Coding Train, has made some fantastic videos on all this, and there'll be a link up there to go and see his introductions videos, which I really encourage you to watch. This is going to be a quick overview. Um, so I want to make something over there. Um, let's imagine you've done this, you're going to watch all Daniel, Sh Daniel Schiffman's videos, his intro videos, um, later on. But let's have a little look at what you can do first. So um, let's try hitting play again. And there's my square. Now, this is happening because in our library of functions, one of them is create canvas. 
this thing here. Now, create canvas is making a square here. Um, how do I know what that's all about? Well, let's go to the uh, P5 website and have a look why. So, um, da -da 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 -da. let's go to the right URL. Okay, so here's the P5 website. Now, reference. This is one of the most use useful things. This essentially is your documentation. It's all the instructions that you need to know about P5. So if I click on it, you can see these hundreds of things you can do. Now, first of all, you might want to say, well, what is Create Canvas? So I can start typing it in there and it'll tell you all about Create Canvas. And it'll basically say that um, you're going to make a square or a rectangle and that's its size. Now, the next thing we want to do is to actually put something on there, make something interesting. So something's already happening. So this bit here, function draw, this is where you put all your animation, all your fun stuff is going to go in here. So already we've got background 220. Now that's making a grey background. Well, that's strange. How do I how do I learn more about that? So I go to reference, um, background. Now here I can see it looks like this, background with one number. So that's making a grayscale value. Um, something between black and white and, and the higher that number the lighter it gets and the lower the darker and they actually range between 0 and 255. Um, I won't go into why now but let's just imagine there's 255 possible values and I can uh, it can be great but you, there's another one here look background 255 now I'm just going to copy that and then I'm going to paste it in let's have a look see what happens and it's gone yellow now, just a thought actually, whatever I do here, it changes automatically. Now it won't for you when you first go in here. I've ticked auto refresh to be on. If that's off, I can just try changing a number here. Let's try changing that to 100. And nothing changes, but when I hit play, it will change. But if I click on auto refresh, it'll just update whenever I type anything. So let's just change the number in there, 20. So this is an RGB value, or red, green, blue. So that number's how red it is. So if I put that on 255 and put that on 0 and put that on 0, it'll go bright red. And then as I make other numbers larger, it'll gradually change. So this is me now playing around with a function, the background function, which is in a library, which is in this reference. And that's essentially what P5 is. It's a as it says, a JavaScript library for creative coding. And in this library are hundreds of things. So, right, I want to do something more than that. Let's make a circle. So how do I make a circle? Well, I could scroll down and figure out that it's a shape and it might be a 2D primitive. 2D primitives are things like circles and squares, um, rectangles, that kind of thing. So let's click on circle. Now, let's look at the reference a little bit more closely. Circle's more interesting, so we're going to talk about that one, the background and that kind of thing. So, first of all, it gives you an example. And this example is actually a live sketch. So, I can click on Edit up here. Now, unfortunately, at the resolution I'm at, the text there is going below the Edit button. But trust me, there's an Edit, Reset, and Copy button here. Now, first of all, let's try and click on Edit. Now, to figure out how something works, you could read all the books on it and you could study it and then try and code it from memory, but I prefer just to copy and paste stuff and if I want to figure something out, I prefer just to poke at it and change numbers and see what happens and learn by doing. I think it's a much more fun way. So we've got three numbers here, uh, 30, 30, 20. So if I change the first one, what happens? Let's try and change that to 50 and then click on Run. And it's moved a bit to the right. Okay, so let's try making that last one bigger. Let's make it 200. And, oh, just looks like it's broken. That's strange. Well, let's just try making that 100. Ah, so that last one I can see is the size of the circle. When it was 200, it was so big it filled that screen and it went white. So you can see this is actually a live little P5 editor. Um, I can also click Copy. And let's try pasting it down there. And there's a circle. I also happen to have copied that bit of text there. Now, that's gone grey with two slashes, which means it doesn't actually run. It's called a comment. Um, 
We can learn about comments later, but comments are really useful. I'm just going to delete it for now. Um, now, that's made a little circle in there, and I uh, obviously I said don't read about it first, try playing with it, but I do want to read about it as well. So now I've had a little play, I can see these numbers all do things, but let's just double check in the reference. So if I go down, obviously it gives a description about it. Um, it talks about syntax, now syntax is just the way you write a language, and then it says circle x, y, d, and then it tells you down here what these parameters mean. So let's call each one of these little things, followed by a comma, a parameter. Um, x, the x coordinate of the center, and the y coordinate of the center. So x is your distance from the left hand side going in, and y is your distance from the top going down. D is the diameter. So um, looking at my sketch here, my canvas is 400 that way, left, right, and 400 up, down. So let's make this uh, 200, 200, and now my circle's in the centre. So that's kind of fun. So now I've got a circle there. It's not doing anything, um, but I think that comes a bit later. And um, what we'll do is start looking through the reference library, start looking at little interesting things we could do to make this more exciting. Um, Meanwhile, I would highly encourage you to look at uh, Daniel Schiffman's website. Um, there's a website called The Code Train, but he's also got a channel on YouTube called uh, The Coding Train as well. And there are these great videos he's done to introduce P5. So I would go to the... Well, I'd watch the trailer. The trailer's pretty good as well. Hello, Just here. And, to... and he introduces... P5 here, and then uh, the program for, for beginners, the first couple of videos, will take you through in a lot more depth what I just talked about. Um, and he also does some very advanced videos as well. So this guy's amazing. We'll talk about some other um, uh, areas you can look at to learn more, and I'm going to put some links below as well so you can look at some other places. Um, but that's it for now, and the next video we're going to talk about um, learning a bit more about JavaScript in P5 and uh, actually getting into more detail on everything.